G'day folks, welcome to this channel. Now, the name of this channel is obvious. Now, the, the idea is when you go into a conversation with someone and they go, let me play the devil's advocate. What they're doing is going to try to explain a point of view or an angle that you might not have thought of. Or they're going to pick holes in your story. Either way, they're going to try to do it politely. Now, I have a tendency to probably think of things in a rather unorthodox fashion. I didn't finish high school, but I'm not a poor wit. I'm actually a dual tradesman. So, I know how to follow instructions and listen to people and have a reasonable conversation. So, but... The idea of what I'm going to try to do with this channel is I'm going to post videos of me talking to politicians or people in authority to try to give you a better idea of how little they understand. The fact that I have didn't finish high school and I could have a conversation with these people and bring up topics about possible solutions to problems that we've got on this planet and they're oblivious to it. Either that, or they're deliberately ignoring it, which is pretty close to incompetence. Now, the devil's advocate, now, I have actually read these two books, but I don't want to talk about them, because I have an unorthodox way of interpreting these two books, and it doesn't agree with religion. I don't like religion. All you've got to do is read a history book and realise they suck. But if someone wants to raise the top topic of it, I'll discuss it. But my aim is to be political more than anything. Even though religion is a problem on this planet and it needs to be addressed, but you should still have the freedom to have faith. Okay, now freedom of choice is what I believe in, not freedom from choice, or coercion by choice, or choice by coercion. And I've been a firm believer in philosophy. So the old saying is, where there's smoke, there's fire. Now there's a lot of disenfranchisement on this planet at the moment. And a lot of people aren't aware of where it's coming from. There's a bloke named David Icke. Uh, a lot of people might call him a conspiracy th theorist or conspiracy nut. And I listen to him, and he makes a lot of sense because I feel I'm a, more of a, a long-term thinker. But I live in the short term. You have to. Um, so now... Philosophically, it's about circles and cycles. Now, we live on a circle, even though a circle denotes a two-dimensional object. We live on a sphere. When you're looking at that sphere from a distance, it looks like a circle. And it has its cycles around the sun. And I've had a little song rattling in my head for the last couple of days by Split Ends called History Never Repeats. Well, it does. And it does if you don't learn from your mistakes. And this is what I'm trying to get across to people is we're not learning from our mistakes. We seem to be falling for the same trap that the, the invisible forces on this planet are laying down. Now, they're not really invisible. They are actually people. And they're a very rich, rich bunch of people. And some people go, oh, it's the 1%. Well, no, it's not actually. It's the 1% of the 1%. So it's 0, 0, 0.0001% 0 of the people. And they're so rich, they're trying to actually make the planet look biblical. You know, plagues, um, earthquakes, famine, uh, the whole lot. And they've got the money to do this because they know how to manipulate figures and situations and, and other parties 
wars and rumors of wars. So you just got to look through it. And a lot of people have blinkers on. And they're, they're dealing with their issue. And they want everyone else to stand up for their issue when they're not prepared to stand up for anyone else's issue. And that, that's a blinkers guy. The algorithms on this planet or on the internet actually bring up and recognize your issues and they bring up your news feeds, which is more about what you want to see. You've got to beat that algorithm first. And you are the algorithm because what you look at, what you talk about, what you do, algorithms recognize and that brings you into part of its algorithm. You are the algorithm. So you need to research the other side of the coin. So then it breaks that algorithm and it stops feeding you nothing but the bullshit that you're getting fed. Because you've got a, a, a trick question I can ask a lot of people is how many sides does a coin have? A lot of people straight away they go two. Well, no, it has three because you have the, the circumference that joins the two sides. So it is all about the wording. And this is where the government's getting you, or the governments are getting you. It's about the wording. Now, when they say, oh, there's a lockdown because of this COVID, well, it's not, It's only law, and I'll use that term loosely, it's only law because it's been enacted under the Health Act. Now, the Health Act is law enforceable, but they are doing a lot of things wrong. You've got to look at the wording of what the regulations are, interpret them, and be able to explain that your interpretation to other people. And I've had a lot of trouble in my past with the police, the authorities, and quite a number of times the police would come up to me and go, the law is the law. I have to denounce that because the law is not the law. The law is a guide for the administration. The law can be challenged and it can be changed. So a lot of people don't understand how to do that. We've got this, it's, it's a false division. You've got Labor and you've got Liberal. Now Labor seems to be in bed with the communists. Um, it's, it's pretty obvious. You don't have to go hard to find that Dan's done secret deals behind the, the federal government, you know, not acting in the, shall we say, best interests of the Australian people. He's just and creating jobs for Victorians. Well, that's all real good. But if it's not in the Australian's interest, then he's a little communist state in himself. Queensland's not much better, um, especially when there's videos now floating around where it tells you that the, the CDC, which is the uh, an agency in America that has is now advertising that only 6% of that total amount of people that have died actually died from COVID. Now, I don't, I don't disagree with that because the videos I've watched, they bring up the CDC website and they scroll down and they show you the written part. Um, I'm not a very quick reader. I'm not very good at doing a lot of research, even though I do cross-reference quite a number of things just to make sure that uh, <clears throat> I'm not getting the wall pulled over my eyes. And because I do think in a rather unorthodox fashion, uh, I question everything which is what you do when you play the devil's advocate. You question things and you have conversations with people, try to get them to see a different point of view to improve their their angle or their um, philosophy um, or punch a few holes in it and make them go back to the drawing board. And we do really need a, a reset type of thing, but not the reset the government's got in mind where they want to go cashless and because if you go cashless that's going to ruin a lot of things you know like Tommy won't be able to mow old lady dots mow the lawn down the road for ten dollars on the weekend and you know you'll have to have a, a fucking f-pos machine you know 
um, garage sales, markets, um, a lot of stuff will go out the window. And more so, if you have an argument with someone at the bank or with the government, you know, and they push a button, it's going to screw your day up because you've got no cash to fall back on. And, you know, you might have a twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 cash in your safe at home or something, and you can live on that until and pay your bills until that computer error is fixed. If there's cashless, you won't be able to do that. There's Once that button is pushed, your life is screwed. You know, you won't be able to pay your bills because it's all tied up in electronics. And you'll lose your house, you'll lose everything because you pissed someone off because you didn't suck them off to make them happy so that they didn't push the button in the first place. That's draconian. Um, freedom should be for the individual to choose whether or whether to or whether not to do things. That's freedom. Right now we're, we're going into a stage of freedom from choice by coercion. I don't agree with that. And as many politicians as I can, I'm going to approach. I'll go out of my way. I'm in Brisbane, in Australia. And they're a rather shy and very hard to catch up with creature these days. Um, I live itinerantly. I live in a vehicle. So it's going to be interesting to see them try to catch up with me to have a little chat about anything I say on YouTube. Now, I do want to monetize this station uh, because I'll need the money to, shall we say, challenge the government in every way I can that I think is not, that what they're doing is not righteous. Um, so, but I need about a thousand subscribers just to start to get um, any sort of money from YouTube. And apparently YouTube may be coming censored in Australia in the next few months because of some money figures that are being, shall we say, manipulated. Uh, the channel, the, the mainstream media in Australia is putting it to the government to tell YouTube and Facebook to give them their algorithm codes so that they can manipulate them for their benefit. Now that's more censorship. That's not right. Um, censorship, that, that's not freedom. Freedom of speech should be, okay, if I disagree with that person or if he calls me a racist or if he calls me names or whatever, I go, mate, that's your free choice. I've heard what you said. You've said it. Now I'm going to recognize your face next time I see you so I don't have to engage you um, and then leave it at that uh, but if he's going to be persistent I have the option to either call the police or knock his teeth out either either you know I'm not a young man anymore so if someone wants to come up and harass me I'm going to get really frantic really quick um, I don't want to fight but just because I don't and I've successfully been able to avoid fights in the last 20 years doesn't mean to say I can't. So, yeah, this is basically just a little introduction. Now, there's uh, rallies, and I go to all the rallies, and I talk to people, and I'll be trying to get some of them to talk about their issues. Um, the main ones I have difficulty talking to is the, the socialists or the Marxists. Pardon me, the Marxists, because they seem to think that, that they do show a little bit of arrogance in thinking their way is the right way. And I'd, I'd, I'd try to get them one on one and talk to them. It's much more successful, and uh, they've explained a few things to me that I didn't know, and I'm pretty sure I've explained a few things to them that they were not aware of. So, this is just a little intro. And hopefully you'll enjoy some of the videos I put up with, uh, that I've put up, and having the politicians having to put up with me. Um, because I'm pretty sure once they realise what I'm doing, they're going to become even more shy. Okay. Anyway, thanks for your time. Hopefully I'll catch up to you in the near future.